So I just had a crazy weekend. Uh, last weekend, uh, I just found out that a couple of my friends were learning from therapists that the mental health epidemic with kids is, is skyrocketing right now. And more and more teens are finding themselves in places where they're just losing hope and, and falling into despair. On the heels of that, that I found out last weekend, Monday morning, a good friend of mine walked into my office and let me know that her friend died. And so again, we have this despairing scenario. And when I think about that stuff, this is, these are real people with real emotions and those real emotions um, can overwhelm us at times. And that's the problem that we're going to be tackling today that we see in our own hearts. It's a problem presented in Habakkuk chapter one. It's what God answers in Habakkuk chapter two. And that problem is uh, when tragedy strikes, our memory fades. We can forget how awesome God is right in the midst of of our challenge. And it's kind of like sticking your nose in a, in a bucket of garlic or a bucket of onions. No matter what you do, it's going to overwhelm the senses. And that's what tragedy is. Tragedy can overwhelm our senses. And so um, what you're going to get today is we're going to travel through to Habakkuk chapter three. There's a short version of this message, and then there's a long version of the message. And we're going to start do, trying that out. The short version of the message is going to be anywhere between uh, five to 10 minutes. And then the longer version is going to be 20 more uh, minutes. So if you, if you really want to study or listen to what we have to say, we invite you to watch that longer version. And, and, uh, but for now, I want you to hear this in short form. And so you're going to hear some points, and then you're going to see these verses. And, and we're going to jump right in to Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. It says here, A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, on Shigionoth. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day, in our time, make them known, in wrath, remember mercy. So simply put, verses 1 and 2 talk to the, uh, the, the need for us to believe in the power and the mercy of God. Um, if you look at verse 1, it's all we see is Habakkuk saying, all I've got left to give is a prayer. And if we look at verse 2, what we see is, is this call to stand in awe of God. So God's going to do what God's going to do regardless of our current circumstance, regardless of the judgment that we're going to face in our lives for whatever reason. We're going to go through life of dealing with the things that we deal with, and yet we can still call on God, and yet God is going to be there with us because He's a good God, and He's going to do that with, um, with power and with mercy. And so the challenge I give you is to call on this God who wants to be with you in power and in mercy. So Habakkuk chapter 3 through 7, all those things, there's a lot of words and phrases. One of the key ones that stands out to me is pestilence. And uh, the, the, the thought that was really clear here is to remember how amazing God is. Uh, and we see that in several ways. Uh, verse 3 is telling us that God begins this journey from heaven and comes to earth. And what's amazing about God is that he does it. Verse 4 tells us about the glory of God filling the earth like a sunrise. And just think how vast is a sunrise. Verse 5 tells us that God would be arriving into this land that's devastated by plague and pestilence. And that's important because it harkens back to the, 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 the Egyptians being in captivity. Oh, sorry, the Hebrew, Hebrew people being in captivity under Egypt. And, and then verse 6 and 7 speaking to God's greatness and, and the fractured nation of Israel. There's a ton going on here. But the thing to remember is that we are supposed to remember how amazing God is. And that's part of finding faith in the dark. Let's take a look at verse 8. It says, Were you angry with the rivers, Lord? Was your wrath against the streams? Did you rage against the sea when you rode your horses and your chariots to victory? You uncovered your bow. You called for many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. Torrents of water swept by. The deep roared and lifted its waves on high. Sun and moon stood still in the heavens at the glint of your flying arrows, at the lightning of your flashing spear. In wrath you strode through the earth, and in anger you threshed the nations. I love that phrase. You came out to deliver your people, to save your anointed one. You crushed the leader of the land of, your, of wickedness. You stripped him from head to foot. So these last six verses can be quite a bit confusing, but one of the key things that I want you to catch today is rejoice. Um, rejoice knowing that God is a deliverer. That's one of the key themes that we're going to see. And we see it in a variety of ways. Some verses I want to highlight to you is um, verse 8 speaks to water. And water and the historic challenge of Israel has to do with the, the, the parting of the Red Sea. Verses 9 and 10 have to do with God's program of re redeeming Israel through judgment, which is why he uses words like bow and arrow and mountains and torrents. 
verse 11 talks about the sun standing still, which is a reference to the book of Joshua when, when um, the nation of Israel was just newly forming and, and God caused the sun to stand still to exact judgment on his enemies. And verse 12 teaches us about God threshing, threshing the nations, which though that word's hard for me to say, I can't thresh. I, I like the word because it's, it's about God's, um, the way God does things. And then finally, verse 13, um, there's this deliverance. And so as we look back on these six verses, there's a challenge for us to remember um, that God's doing a great thing and we're supposed to rejoice that God is a deliverer. Let's take a look at verses 14 and 16 now. It says, with his own spear, you pierced his head with, when his warriors stormed out to scatter us, gloating as though about to devour the wretched who are in hiding. You trampled the sea with your horses, churning the great waters. I heard and my heart pounded, my lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. So verses 14, 15, and 16, um, things start to get aggressive. And the point that's becoming very clear is that we're supposed to remember um, the God of justice. So this whole warrior thing that's going on, the spear thing that's going on. Verse 15 talks about the tra- you trampled the sea with your horses churning the great waters, it's supposed to help us remember um, the Israelites passing through the Red Sea and how God split them for us. And, and all of this is specific to us remembering that even though we, we don't think there's hope on the horizon, there is. It, it's kind of like buying a house in this crazy market right now. You can, people are putting in offers um, with thousands of dollars above market value as part of their offer, and they're not getting their offers accepted. And it can feel like nothing's ever going to happen for me. And yet God's going to use that in your life. He's done it in my life. He's going to do it in the lives of your friends and family. Um, Just because things don't happen right now or when we want them to doesn't mean that they won't happen. God is a God of justice. So now we're going to take a look at the crux of this whole passage in verses 17 and 18. Let's take a look. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails... And the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. So the main point of this whole passage is through the darkest times, we can find joy in the Lord. And the, this little short segment for you is um, this. I want to encourage you, whatever you're going through, seek peace and remember that God can be trusted. And if you can find peace with God and you can trust him, you can find joy. And that's what allows us to have tears uh, and, and call them happy, happy tears. And as we think about all that we can see, we, we accept our lives the way they are. That's what Habakkuk is doing, chapter, uh, verse 17 and verse 18. He's really telling us, I, I, I'm going to rejoice even though um, I'm not enjoying what I'm hearing. I'm going to rejoice. And so then we take that and we end in verse 19 with the challenge. Let's take a look. It says, The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights for the director of music on my stringed instruments. So coming out of this last verse, verse 19, the challenge I'm going to give you here is that you let the Lord and I let the Lord be our strength. That's what it says in verse 19, the sovereign Lord is my strength. Then it also says, he makes my feet like the feet of a deer. It says he enables me to tread on the heights. And the idea here is that we are like these animals that are able to walk in the mountains and not be fearful. I think of big horned sheep just kind of walking around the side of a mountain. They're not afraid because God has made them sure footed. And just like that, we need to ask the Lord to, to give us the strength and let the Lord be our strength. I invite you to do that so that you can learn how to have faith in the dark. Thank you so much for joining us for this series. Now, I'm going to invite you to consider giving to The Orchard financially. You're going to see a series of links, and there's going to be um, a text feature that you can do. The idea here is we depend on our faithful and generous givers to, to enable and prop up our ministry. There's no way we can do this without that. Each video that we make has a cost to it. Each, each All the time that we take during the week to, to plan and to uh, execute the services that we do, or they all require financial support. So we invite you to do that. In addition to that, I want you to know that part of your financial support goes to support missionaries all over the world. And so we invite you to give to our general fund, and then we invite you to also give to our 
Missions Fund, which you can find both of those on uh, at our website, www.orchardcc.org, at our Donate tab. Now, we're going to take some time and sing and remember how awesome God is. Well, I love you, Lord, though your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God And so my life you have been faithful So my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You will lead me through the fire